Um, so we can start. Thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Shima. Um, uh, I'm going to introduce a project we did for a company, for, with, with my company Tenalt, uh, based in Slovenia, for uh, Slovenia National Television. Slovenia National Television has a nice website that has about a million daily users. And Slovenia is a country of two million people, so it's really popular. <laughs> um, it has uh, our part of the web page is audio video archive, and it contains about million and seven hundred thousand clips. It's a pretty large archive. They started archiving in 2006, but we are also digitalizing the old um, old recordings and also putting them on archive. And our part of the web page, only the archive has 3,000 concurrent requests, so it's quite a load. I'll explain it. In. So before we started this project, there was this Oracle Java API that was really slow. And actually, the guy who was maintaining it quit because he couldn't handle it anymore. So it was unmaintained and, of course, unflexible. So what we did is used Pearl Dancer. So um, on top of Pearl Dancer, of course, we used uh, Template Flute, which is a really uh, flexible, a really nice uh, templating engine. It's designer friendly because it doesn't have any inline code or mini uh, templating language. So that's friendly part of it. And since the, uh, since the editing part uh, had the really big requirements on roles and aut authorizations, since it's a big company, we use Dancer plugin authentication extensible, which, which is really, um, it turned out really great. So we started our project with the live part. Live part basically um, geo blocks the live content. So as you can see, the uh, dancer, uh, the point is you can set up uh, the uh, schedule on uh, only Slovenia, all countries, or none or force it if there is no schedule. And there is also a schedule editing part where if the input schedule that was set up isn't OK, you can fix it. So after we finished the live part, we got our hands dirty and started migrating Oracle to MySQL and connecting Dancer. Uh, we connected Dancer and uh, uh, database with Dancer plugin database, which is a really nice plugin for Dancer also. So this is the editing part of the web page. This is used only by the employees of the company, of course. You can edit uh, data that is pulled from multiple sources. We have a different um, software that is used for clipping, either audio or video. So some of the sources have some data, some have only a timestamp and a program that it was run on, so we can compare it with the schedule and pu push the data inside to, to with the recording. Some have none of the data, of course. <laughs> so, um, and we also added a feature for uh, generating and uploading and generating thumbnails for each recording. Uh, and after that, of course, we had to give the people, <laughs> the content. So we created, uh, we used Dancer also for the API. Uh, the API is basically a, a, a JSON. So Dancer has a really nice uh, thing. You, you take a Perl, uh, uh, how do you say, it? structure and just say, it to, to JSON and it generates it. So it's really uh, nice. <laughs> uh, so this is how it looks like. Of course, we, the API has multiple calls with many, many uh, parameters, but the 
big thing was a full text search, which actually generates most of the load on the API because this is um, autocomplete that hits directly the, to the API. So for this, of course, this was too heavy for MySQL. So we used uh, Solar for it. Uh, I don't know how many of you know Solar. It's uh, Java that works, actually. So uh, I, mean, I mean, I really like it. <laughs> so for connecting uh, Perl with Solar, we used Web Service Solar. Uh, it's an OK uh, module. You just uh, give it a URL, and then you have to. Th this is the ugly part, actually, because in these more complicated queries, you have to um, send it a string. So it doesn't operate with objects. I didn't like it, but it works, and it returns uh, the response. So uh, another problem with solar is you, you, you define how many rows you want. So it returns uh, when the, when the uh, number of rows is big, it rapidly slows down. Like, so it's for, it, for these quick searches, it's really nice. But And this is the response time. We got it under 40 milliseconds uh, on 3,000 concurrent requests. So it's, I'm pretty proud of it. I think. Uh, OK, so after that, we started uh, doing, so this, is, was, this was the main part. So basically we, so after that we started adding new features. Uh, this feature was made um, uh, with the great support of um, hearing disabled community because they need subtitles, of course, to watch the content. And all, not all content on television is uh, subtitled, so they can watch it on, on, online. Uh, we basically get the subtitles in an XML that was made for television, and then we have to adopt them to our clipping because it's clipped directly from the uh, from the stream. So uh, the, the here was, I mean, we had to, we had to rewrite the uh, XML for the offset and uh, generate two formats of uh, schedule of um, subtitles because. GV player that we used on a web page doesn't support color in XML format. Um, also, upsell of this was that we got the, these subtitles, so we basically started, it's not in production yet, we started making subtitle search, so user can go search through the subtitle, find what he's looking for, and jump right through it with the timestamp, because we know where it is in the clip. So it's also a nice feature. Then, <coughs> um, next feature was geotagging. Basically, it's pretty small. I, it, it, only, it can only search by your location. So you say, tell me what, uh, where is the uh, record, some recording that is geotagged near me, like for five kilometers. So we use solar also for this one. Um, as I said before, we are uh, basically we used all the mentioned ones and uh, the software and some other. We are constantly developing this software with great support of our client, and he really likes it. And I hope uh, you like it too. The presentation is a little shorter, <laughs> but thank you. Uh, for listing me out. Okay. Um, I had one question which was about geocoding, yeah. geotagging. Um, why are the video items geocoded? Uh, so can you give some examples of that and, and who, who has done that work of geocoding? Them? Yeah, the, the geotagging uh, is done by hand by uh, people who, and the the point actually is, for instance, you say, okay, for instance, there is a news on television that Yapse is going on now in Sofia, and you go and you say, okay, what's, been, what's happened in the last 
I mean, what has happened near me. And so, so it's for local news, well. basically, for people, so can, they can search their local news because um, regional news or whatever. So that, that was the point. Cool. Any other questions, maybe? Dancer 5. <laughs> what version of Dancer are you using? Uh, that, I don't know, actually. Is it one or two? One. Um, what measures did you take to, to uh, get the response time down? We optimized uh, the, the, because the solar doesn't do all the work, so we mostly optimized the uh, uh, the the the, uh, the uh, MySQL queries also, and Solar did a lot a lot of work on that too. I mean, that was basically it. Okay. Anything else? So you were talking about like 3,000 concurrent requests for those um, graphs that you show. What mm -hmm. kind of um, user base do you have? Do you actually have that many requests or is that just um, a benchmark? I, b basically the point is with this uh, auto-complete uh, auto thing that it sends requests all the time, you know. So I think th this generates most, most of the load, you know because it's constantly connecting to the API. And as I said, the user base is also big because a lot of people r really use it. For instance, um, we had a problem in uh, when the Winter Olympics were, and uh, I don't know how, how, how much do you know about that, but um, basically the whole web page collapsed because there was a, a Slovenian skier skiing in the morning, so everybody was watching it online and so it is a huge base of users. Yeah. What kind of hardware do you have behind it? <laughs> Actually, uh, that's a funny thing. We have a um, problem with getting new hardware. So this is an API runs on an IBM 356. I don't, I don't know, but it's five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, the server, the what server. What kind of car architecture? Mainframe or in or Intel or what do you use? Uh, Intel. Hi. Uh, so uh, you use the dancer only for. Uh, internal like CMS feature or uh, do you also use it to serve to the the content to the final uh, no the co the um, uh, web page is uh, it's not our part of the project basically so we don't use I mean, I mean we don't work on that we just made the uh, content management and the API basically we send it to the web page and then, and then they they just get uh, data from us do you use a front-end uh, web, web server or just uh, uh, Nginx uh, or Apache or uh, and uh, which, uh, oh, which yeah, server it's, do it's, you use? It's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's actually on uh, Lighty uh, with uh, Starman and Plakup with reverse proxy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.